I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Stephanie Smith, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and tell us what you teach. I'm going into my 12th year of teaching and I teach what they call a 3-4 loop. So my third graders from last year will become my fourth graders this year. I teach at um, Oak Ridge Elementary, which is in Oak Park, Sacramento. and it's been a wonderful experience teaching there for the last six years. Explain how the looping process works for those who don't know and, and, and then what it's like to have those students for two years in a row. So um, as you know, third graders are considered primary students and they are coming in eager to learn. They are still learning how to read as opposed to reading to learn. And um, I keep them through the third grade curriculum and then through the spring we kind of not necessarily wind down the year, but just gear up for the next fourth grade year. And then I get to keep them for fourth grade. So the classroom stays the same. I keep the kids the same, but the curriculum changes and we just up the ante to the fourth grade rigors and standards. So what's, what are the challenges in, 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 in doing that in having the, the looping? I, I can't actually find any challenges to it other than it keeps me on my toes, which I prefer. Um, I get to see what the new changes are every other year for the third grade standards and curriculum to the fourth grade. Um, but most of it is just wonderful benefits of building trust with my students and um, really getting to know their families. I have a couple of families that I've had one of their children in each of my loops and so I've known them for six years and they've known me for six years. So it really just deepens our relationships and our trust and then academically um, when school starts in a month, I can just hit the ground running, knowing where my kids left off academically, as well as um, their interpersonal relationships with each other. And so we, we waste no time when it comes to the fall. So how does that help you then in building a relationship with the, the students and their families, having them for two consecutive years? Well, I think it's important to know um, a little background of Oak Ridge. A lot of my families either went to Oak Ridge themselves as children and had a negative experience, or they had older s children that went to Oak Ridge before um, transformations were made at our school. So um, when we first started working on really building family leadership, not just involvement, it took a lot for parents to trust me and to, to really think that I'm, I'm there for the long haul. And so when they see that I'm committing not just one year, but two years into their family, they're willing to slowly at their own pace open up and really um, jump into school involvement and leadership because they know that I'm there for them. And uh, I'm not just here to kick their kids out in the spring. I'm really here to, to be part of their families and to be part of the community. How important is that family teacher relationship to make sure that you're on the same page? That's huge. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of work with the home visit project and we find that even though a school day is long, the statistics show that they're really only in my classroom for I think 33% of their, of their days. And so I tell my families all the time that I, I really do need your partnership. I get to be part of your family for two years, but really your child's success will depend on how much you do in the next 18 years. And so um, it, the research just keeps coming out with the dual capacity framework of families and parents and teachers engaging to really build that success together. And I find it to be true every single year in my classroom that once I get the families involved and they, they see um, my intentions of building their children up into success, then there's really not that many hurdles left mm. for me to take on. So what inspired you to be a teacher in the first place? That's a good question, Tim. Um, I'm sure you hear it a lot, but school just worked for me as a kid. Not a lot of things seemed to work in my childhood, but school did. And so um, it just has always been something that I feel comfortable in, a school setting. I had great teachers growing up. Um, I was that little girl that was playing with the teddy bears, trying to get them to learn their multiplication facts. But really, it wasn't until I got into college and declared my elementary ed um, degree that it started to make sense that this is the job where my curiosities can continue to grow. And no year is going to be the same, no day is going to be the same. And so, um, with, you know, I think it's 50% of teachers leave within the first five years. 
it's important for me to continually go back to that question of not only why did I go into teaching, but why do I keep doing it? And why I keep doing it is simply because those 30 faces in my classroom are the future of our, of our community, and I love that I get to play a role in that. Um, we don't always get to see how that plays out right. in the future, but it's something really important and I'm passionate about. So what are some of the challenges that you think teachers today face? Um, some of the challenges, we have many, um, but one of the biggest ones right now is just that we have to start collaborating more often. I know that when I was growing up, I, I don't think my teachers ever communicated other than just passing in the hallways. Um, when I got into teaching, I too was one of those teachers that just kind of stayed in my own classroom and did my own thing. But now with the California standards and the new generation science standards, all of those things that are coming out where we just can't do it on our own um, really inspires me to, to look at that challenge of collaborating and um, just go for it. And social media is a great place as well for us to just collaborate across the country as well. There are so many other resources out there, there you know, are. Uh, across the country or wherever that you can get some good ideas. Yeah, yeah, and being part of um, projects like the Home Visit Project and the Writing Project, not just in our area but then throughout all of California, um, I just soak up everything I can from all these other great mm -hmm. teachers I surround myself with. Explain the Home Visit Project for a lot of people who don't know. So um, it actually started in Sacramento right. and it's really exciting to see how it's bloomed past just um, teachers and parents wanting to build relationship. So the Home Visit Project is based off the reality that no one cares what you know until they know that you care. And that's just something that I've always been passionate about and then when I found out about the Home Visit Project seven, eight years ago, it just became something that made sense to me. So the premise is you take your whole class and you just choose to visit all of them either in their homes if the parents are willing We've met at Taco Bell down the street. I've done home visits at the park. I've done home visits in driveways because um, it's just where their families feel the most comfortable. And the idea is to just, of course, go out in partners with another colleague or um, staff member at the school and just get to know the families. There's no real agenda other than get to know what they um, care about and also learn their hopes and dreams because I can't I can't help be part of a child's success if I don't know the family's definition of that success. And so it's really um, simple, but yet powerful. And once you make that connection, you build that trust with the families, mm -hmm. don't you? Yeah, and so once that, that trust is built, and I've stepped out of my comfort zone to then be part of their family and their environment, they're just that much more willing to come into my arena as it is and be part of this school campus because I've gone out on the awkward limb and now they're willing to come to Oak Ridge for some of them again and um, take the risk of being partners with me. So what does it mean to you to be called a teacher of the year? What's it like? <laughs> it's rather humbling. Um, it's still something I can't quite um, grasp or understand but it's really an honor. I think the school that I teach at is just full of wonderful teachers and I'm only great because I surround myself with great people and I think Oak Park is a place that is just thriving and is on the cusp of just being an amazing rich community um, for Sacramento and so it's extremely exciting to, to just be um, given this honor as Teacher of the Year. So if you were to make a quick sales pitch to someone who's considering teaching, what would you tell them? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I think that um, I would have them check their ego at the door because um, I, no teacher can make it if they think that they know it all and that they are going to just be giving that wonderful information out into the world of students. And so um, someone that's considering education as their profession, I would first just say, um, it will take a lot of work, as you know. It, it's hours upon hours, and it's, it's draining, but then if you allow yourself to look for the good and the success in every child, then it's the most rewarding profession there is. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you so much. We've, we've been speaking with Stephanie Smith, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.